The liver channel rises at the big toe's cluster of hair center, goes up the top of the foot instep, one sun short of the inner ankle, then above the ankle for eight sun, meeting the spleen tie-in and coming in back of it up to the knee fossa, then following the thighs yin, entering the hair center, crossing the yin tools, the genitals, propping up the small abdomen, pressing the stomach, subordinating the liver, and networking with the gallbladder. Then up to pierce the diaphragm, spreading along the ribs, the flanks, following the back of the larynx, going up to enter the forehead, the temple, connecting with the eye system. Above, coming out at the forehead and meeting with the dew at the summit. The second branch goes from the eye system down to the inside of the cheek, circling the inside of the lips. And a third branch returns from the liver, departs, piercing through the diaphragm and pouring above into the lungs. There is a certain exactitude here that one does not find in the other channel descriptions. For example, there's a very clear direction of one sun below the ankle bone, which is also stated in Ling Shu 2 when discussing liver 4. And then there is the eight sun above the ankle where the crossing and switching over with the spleen channel takes place. It is not that they're discussing an area um, or naming an area, but a very, very clear measurement. It also stands out that this is a channel with relatively few points, <clears throat> and it kind of ends at the ribs, and as opposed to the other yin channels that do seem to have points on the chest. And that some of the points are very concentrated in very small areas, like the cluster at the groin, for example, liver 10, 11, and 12. If one were to give a theme or a title to each channel, the liver channel might be considered as the Hon channel, and it might also be considered as the genital or the psoas channel. The Hun is that which has been sent by the ancestors. It is a young kind of spirit, a vaporous kind, not an earthly kind. The Hun is meant to experience the world in the current era, the current culture, and bring those experiences back to the ancestors kind of like a collective consciousness that gets enriched by our individual experiences. It is as if the ancestors are wondering what it might be like to live in the 21st century with its challenges, and the Hun is sent down to investigate it. So the Hun has a bit of a purpose, something to be expressed in this form, yin, world, and it will encounter and challenges by the world that might distract it from its original mission, so to speak. To keep in alignment with the Hun, with our purpose, we have to have a sincerity and integrity and urge, which is what Liver One is suggesting. The ancestors are obviously linked with the descendants, and so the channel also goes into the genital region to make that connection, and for most people, there will be some challenges encountered there. The last points, liver 13 and 14, are clearly related by name to death, to the Hun returning to the ancestors. This is where the breath, the ribs reach, and where there is no more movement of the ribs, of the breath. Then the Hun will go out, perhaps through the summit at the head. We should also consider that the physical connection to the ancestors is also through the descendants, meaning through the genitals and reproductive region in the lower abdomen, which the channel goes through and then further props up the lower abdomen. So it is also the psoas channel, and the symptoms of the liver channel include pain in the groin and inability to bend or look up, hernias and abdominal swellings. So anyone with cysts <clears throat> or fibroids is considered to have a liver deficiency. Liver one, Da Dun, is translated as a big pile or a big stomp. But Dun, as written actually in liver one, means to urge or sincere, honest. When you add <clears throat> the stone radical on the left of this character, it becomes a pile which is how Ellis translates it. To me, 
This translation feels almost like an invitation to step on one's big toe. This is just not quite what I think the ancestors had in mind, although who knows. If we take the liver channel as the journey of the Hun, it means that like the gallbladder channel, it will have clarity and obstacles associated with it. It is the Hun de Yang investigating the current yin world, and it will be suggesting a life theme, tasks for our lives. It is sent down by the ancestral court to experience life in the current era and its challenges, and to bring those experiences back to the ancestral collective. To do that, there needs to be a sincerity, an honest urge. Is that what the ancients meant when they named liver one the big urge or the big sincere? I do not know, but this way of looking at the name matches the way I use the point clinically, whereas a big stomp does not. Liver one <clears throat> is a point of choice for liver deficiency, meaning there is dull, not sharp, pressure pain on liver 14 or under the ribs on the right side. It also alleviates right bladder 43 pressure pain and right side neck pain, especially at C3, that accompanies liver deficiency. It is a supporting point in cardiac treatments, as wood is the mother of earth. And it is a point to consider in nervous system disorders, anxiety, panic, depression, etc., especially when the pulse is rapid. Liver 1, taken at the tip of the toe, kind of in the same manner the pericardium 9 is taken, is a good point for eyes with oculomoxa. So autonomic nervous system or liver deficiency, which in TCM translates to less blood, meaning less anchoring for the Hun, do seem to support the interpretation of liver 1 as the big sincerity, <clears throat> as in outlining our purpose and related to the Hun. Liver 2, Xinjiang, is translated by Ellis as moving between. This is totally adequate. For Ellis, it suggests the location as the space between the two toes, which certainly makes sense. Xing means to walk, to move, to process, to behave, to form. It has a very large umbrella of connotations. We acupuncturists tend to mostly think of it as yin-yang wuxing, the five phases or movements of yin-yang. So we think of it as movement. Qian is the crack between the two leaves of a door where the sun shines through. If I look at the name in the light of the liver being the Han channel, then the name might start to take on a slightly different connotation. It might suggest that once we initiated the spark or <clears throat> the dive into living this life, we are really in an in-between process between birth and death and also between the world of the ancestors, a yang world, and the world we're in, a yin world. And there may be conflicts between what we have been sent to do with the Hun and the experiences we're having in the world of our lives. This will create friction or heat. And of course, TCM loves the use of liver too to clear heat. Again, I do not know if the ancestors had this idea when they named liver too. I am simply suggesting it as an option that can give us more views and treatment ideas, a way to expand how we see the point. Primarily, I use liver too being the fire point as a diagnosis point. And if it has pain upon pressure, it invites the use of liver 4 and liver 8, the metal and water points. I need a liver 2 against the channel, so in the direction of liver 1, and I do this for headaches behind the eye. One somewhat unusual use of liver 2 is for testicular problems, using liver 2 on one side and liver 1 on the other. The idea is that the testicles are where the liver channel enters and intermixes the two sides, and testicle issues will indicate that the two sides of the liver channel are uneven. The testicles in men 
being the lowest part of the torso, hanging off the body, affect our gait, how we carry ourselves. And for that reason, I have actually done this testicular treatment on women as well. This is when you find that there is something in the perineal floor that is pulling off to one side. The idea is to reduce the problem side with liver 2 and to tonify the other side with liver 1 and balance the liver channels. Liver 3, Tai Chong, the Great Surge, is physically where we need to push down in order to establish our upright posture. If we do not activate the area of liver 3, the whole posture becomes sluggish and we might roll onto the outside of the foot and in some cases on, even onto the inside of the foot. So this is the area where our posture is being charged, that is Chong. If we look at the Hun model and Chong as being our core, our blood, it points out that when the Hun is aligned, we find our core, our purpose. Even if, as liver to suggest, we might be moving in between spaces and not always aligned. But when we are aligned, there is a charge. Although liver 3 is an immensely popular point, as it would be befitting with its name and location, I tend not to use it much. But that is because I have rebelled against the TCM workhorses in favor of exploring more options, not because the point isn't powerful. However, there is no doubt that liver 3 is a powerful point, just like large intestine 4, because they correspond to and affect a large area of the brain. And energetically, they create the thunderbolt, the vajra of the fish, which we discussed in the context of lung 10, something that charges the body, that sends a thunderbolt through the body. My primary use of liver 3 is in combination with spleen 3 for mouth sores, though occasionally I do also use it for hepatitis, with large intestine on the, four, on the right side, with a black clip of an iron pumping cord, and liver 3 on the left side with the red clip. Liver 4, Zhong Feng, the center's authority, is a very special point. Ling Shu 2, says that liver 4 opens the flow of the center when needled with a channel flow, and if needled against it, it creates knots. This is the only point in the discussion of all the antique points, all the five shoe points, that gets any kind of commentary. All the other points are simply named. And yet, most people don't really use liver 4. Everybody loves to use liver 2 and liver 3, and liver 4, which seems to be the favorite in the Ling Shu, we kind of ignore. The location of liver 4 is also explicitly stated as one sun below the ankle. This is different, again, from what most people will tend to take it nowadays. But about one sun below the ankle, one will find a slightly puffy tissue, and this is the effective point. The name for liver 4, Zhang Feng, means to confer authority over the center, which I presume to be the lower abdomen. There is one other feng in the body, which is kidney 23, shen feng, the shen's seal, or the shen's authority. Feng is also related to jie, street, as in stomach 30, <clears throat> where the tablet part is surrounded by the radical to move, xing. And liver 4 is a good point to resolve psoas problems. Liver 4 is probably best known for the treatment of Oketsu, stock non-physiological blood that piles up and reflects as pressure pain on left stomach 27 area. In this case, it is used on the left side with left lung 5. However, <clears throat> before Oketsu became popular, we were using liver 4 for liver problems especially when there is right-sided neck problems. For tendon problems, though liver 8 will tend to do a better job for that, and also for low back pain, and <clears throat> to release the psoas and the inguinal. If we're looking at the Hun model of the liver channel, then liver 4 suggests that when the Hun is aligned, we have the seal or authority with the center 
and all is harmonious. There are many different ideas as to where the liver channel is. Some feel it is just behind the bone, but that is exactly where the spleen channel is located. And Wang Juyi suggests that it is quite a bit behind that even. For me, the liver channel is on the tibia and can be clearly seen when you press the flesh of the calf medially and forward. The line on the bone is very, very clear. Liver 5 is where there is a depression on the bone. When you press on it, it leaves a strong indentation. This will not always appear on everyone. When this is the case, when it does appear, it is like a worm has been chewing on the wood channel. A pathology has been started. The point will be about level with kidney 9 and spleen 7. Spleen 7 is just behind the bone at about the same level, <clears throat> though in the case of both spleen 7 and liver 5, I am looking for a dent, almost like a pitting edema, not any particular measurement. Obviously, if spleen 7 and liver 5 are at about the same level, and one is supposed to be 5 ton above the ankle and one 6 ton above the ankle, it means that liver 5 is a bit higher than a text description of the 5 ton above the ankle bone. Liver 5, Ligo, is an insect that bores into the wood in creating a ditch. It is a hole in the bone on the wood channel. This is a direct moxa, okay point. The treatment for termites boring into the wood is to smoke them out. Hence, the treatment of choice at liver 5 is moxa. Also, if you think about it, there's not a lot of space for a needle there. It requires slightly more moxa than other points, and say about 15 ouchies as opposed to 6 or 7 on most points. It is a point that we use on women with endometriosis. It is also an anti-inflammatory point for the lower jaw, often combined with spleen 5, and it strengthens the mucosal membranes. It also acts as an anti-inflammatory for the skin, so it is used for skin conditions with itchy or oozy sores like poison oak or eczema. It is also the point of choice for gout pain, in which case it is combined with spleen 9. From the Hun model's perspective, when the Hun loses its clarity, when we lose our purpose, it is like a worm is starting to consume us. Liver 6, Zhangdu, the central big city, is a point that I do not use. This is partly because I look for the hole in the bone for liver 5 and take it slightly above the official location. And there may be several of those holes so a higher hole may officially be liver 6. I was once asked by a prominent Chinese practitioner why I did not use liver 6 for hepatitis, given that it is the she point of the liver. I told her that I use spleen 7 and kidney 7, and showed her the location of spleen 7. And then she said, oh, but that is my liver 6, even though my spleen 7 is behind and touching the bone and not on the bone. So we all have different ideas of where these points are. So for me, since I don't have a particular thought or use for liver 6, it's like it's a point that exists in the textbook, uh, but not practically speaking. Also, liver 5 really only shows up when you can find the hole. Otherwise, it's a, it's a theoretical point. In terms of looking at the point names in relationship to the Hunt's journey, I can see the name is serving opposite ideas. It can refer to a large metropolis where we encounter many obstacles, many diversions, and it can suggest also our own center, meaning we are in line with the Hun's curriculum. I've never experimented with this point, so this is just theoretical. It is really merely an attempt on my part to satiate the requirement of acknowledging the existence of this point. Liver 7, Xi Guan, the knee gate, is another point I do not use, except for diagnosis. ACL injuries will reflect as pain above spleen 9 and around liver 7, not so much on the inner knee eye, 
and I use this area to assess treatment points, usually spleen 5 and stomach 41. Liver 8. Church 1, the bending spring, can be seen as a spring, like spleen 9 or gallbladder 34, relating to the lift in the knee. Or it can be seen perhaps more in relationship to the spring in heart 1 and kidney 1, referring to our inner fountain, so it is related to how the hon finds its expression in us. Does it flow or thrive? Or is it constantly obstructed and struggling? The point name clearly implies that the knee should be bent when we use the point. If you use a bolster under the knee, that is enough. Trying to find the point with the knee straight, say when the patient is lying face down, is quite challenging. What I am looking for is a soft nodule, not a hard one, but a soft nodule or puffiness that feels like it is spreading when you touch it, when you press on it. Liver 8 is the main point for any kind of cyst or fibroids. When a patient has had cysts or fibroids, regardless of whether they have already been removed, liver 8 will often be the main treatment point that will treat whatever other symptoms the patient is experiencing, because cysts are an indication of a liver deficiency. This is going to be especially true in gynecology, but does apply to other kinds of cysts as well. Liver 8 is also the main point used for tendons, rather than gallbladder 34, which is, in my understanding, have more, has more to do with torque, something that obviously does happen often in tendons and ligaments. But for any kind of tendonitis or fasciitis, I look at liver 8 as the treatment point of choice. Being the water point, it is part of the metal water combination, liver 4 and liver 8, and used whenever there is pressure pain on liver 2. However, it is also considered a tonifying point, being water on wood. This is typical of the liver, where excess is always implying deficiency. When the liver has less blood, like a dried sponge, it gets thorny and excess arises. Liver 9, yin bao, the yin wrapping, suggests a connection to the lower abdomen and perineal floor, where we have the uterus or bladder, which are both bowels, sacs, in a yin area. Like inner yin, which is on the kidney channel at the same level, liver 9 also provides the support for the perineal floor. This is a hormonal area and typically has bumps or pain or pressure in women with hormonal imbalances. It is also a good point in cancer treatments. It is also a good point for breasts, and it is a point that is used for eyes. In terms of looking at the point name with regard to the hun, it implies our ability to work with, manage, not be overburdened by the yin, by the accumulations and substances that are part of the life in the physical realm. I tend to look at liver 10, 11, and 12 as one group, and I represent that group as is if it was liver 12. Although, because I tend to go lower, I am probably more likely really using liver 11, so as to avoid invading the patient's boundaries around the pubic bone. These three points are on the insertion of the psoas, and therefore relate to the psoas as the spring of our movement, charging our movement, as well as the coil of fears and freezing response and the ability to lock or release the nervous system, as we've discussed with kidney 11 and stomach 30. Liver 10, Tzuwuli, the leg five miles, is one of those points with a ver very grand name, yet it is not often used. Unlike stomach 36 and large intestine 10, the three mile points, the two five mile points, large intestine 13 and liver 10, do not have that elevated state of being used a lot. Liver 11, yin lian, the yin corner, or the incorruptible or the honest yin, is thought by Ellis to be a reference to the corner, the angle of the pubic bone. One could also look at liver 11 as examining yin, or honest yin, and not just as a corner. 
So yin lian, examining the yin, may be a reminder that as we approach the genital region, that we can have either more or less clarity or honesty, even in the hidden arenas of our desires. That the point of the hun being here is to examine the yin. The liver 11 area also treats the big toe. People with big toe pain will tend to have congestion, even a nodule in the upper thigh, upper inner thigh, just below the inguinal groove. Liver 1, Da Dun, the great honest, is therefore related to liver 11, Yin Lian, the yin honest. So while I'm translating both points, liver 1 and liver 11, slightly differently than Ellis, or quite a lot differently perhaps than Ellis, it has a connotation to what I find use, useful clinically. And this is going to be true with any point, any interpretation. It will be influenced by one's background, with clinic, by my clinical experiences and whatever other biases we bring. Liver 12, Mai, the anxious pulse, is saying that when we have anxiety, when we feel an urgency, it will tend to show on the psoas. We know that this part of the thigh, like the tailbone, affects the state of our nervous system. When we push the tailbone back, we tend to feel more excited. And when we tuck the tailbone under, pushing into the liver 12 area, we tend to feel more stuck, more depressed. I use liver 12 to release the autonomic nervous system. It can also be used to gauge and release circulatory blockages at the upper thigh, constricting abdominal circulation, which is especially important in gynecological complaints. Liver 13, Jiang Men, is the camphor gate. Even though Jiang, camphor, requires the addition of the wood radical to its left. The name is meant to suggest the end of life, the end of a section, and camphor is used to seal coffins perhaps as a way to pleasantly wake up the dead person when they reach the ancestral court, but I suspect also as a practical earthly way of keeping vermin away for a while. So it makes us feel more pleasant about the person in the coffin, not being eaten by whatever, mice, rats, whatever. So here we have a clear relationship to the Hun's journey on this earthly realm, as does liver 14, Qi Men, the cycle gate, and both are gates, men, on the ribs, a place where we have a number of gates representing the movement of our breath, the movement of life. I use liver 13 to treat mastoid issues, which can be part of the ear problems, hearing problems, tinnitus problems, or autoimmune problems. It also treats deep internal pain. On the right side, liver 13, with right stomach 25, treat fatty liver conditions. Liver 14, Qi Men, the cycle's gate, suggests that at the end of the journey, there is another cycle in store, which is what the liver, wood, represents. Rebirth, renewal, spring, life arising from the depth of the contraction of winter's frost. I tend to diagnose the liver on the right side, more under the ribs, as the physical liver will tend to push under the ribs if it is swollen. However, liver 14 can also be used as a reflex for the physical liver. On occasion, I would needle it directing the needle outwards to release liver signs that I was unable to resolve with other points. I would use liver 4 first and then liver 14. I also use it as a yin waypoint as a way to suggest cyclicity to the body. Again, I needle it pointing outwards. <laughs>